Hello everyone, my name is Austin Shainer, and welcome back to my channel. Let's talk about relief cuts. This is one of those areas in modeling guitars that seems so deceptively simple, but ends up being a real frustration for a lot of people, and myself included. In part 2 of my guitars in Fusion 360 series, I went over some ways to approach this using solid lofting, but not only is that process time consuming, it requires a high degree of patience and discipline in your sketching process. Not to mention that it's difficult to make parametric for future design changes. So I've been thinking about a faster, easier, and more parametric way to approach this challenge for an upcoming project. I started thinking, wouldn't it be nice if we had a variable chamfer? I mean, we have a variable fillet, so why not a chamfer? That is when the light bulb went off, and I started prototyping an entirely different approach to these relief cuts. Instead of trying to sketch the cuts with arcs or splines, why don't we just use the variable fillet to generate the curved edges that we need, and then simply replace those surfaces with what we actually want? Well, after about a month of working out the kinks with other viewers on Facebook and Discord, I think I finally have it working. So keep in mind, we're in a bit of uncharted territory here, so this could either be ridiculous or game-changing. I'll let you decide. So let's take a moment to understand how the variable fillet works, and then we can apply it to a guitar. So I've got two basic shapes here that roughly represent the different types of geometry that we'll be dealing with with this type of method. So we'll have one shape that has natural starts and endpoints, like a cube, or anything that has a sharp point where it changes direction. Or we have the cylinder, which, is, which could represent like a splined body, where you have no natural start points and endpoints. So I can go to the solid tab and say fill it, or bring down the modify tab and go fill it. Make sure it's set from constant, chord length, etc., but make sure you set it to variable. And then if I click on the line that I want to apply this variable fillet to, what it will do is it will give me a start point and an end point. So right now my start point is over here, and my end point is over here. And you notice that it, the start point position is 0, and the end point position is 1. So by adding any additional points in between here, let's say I add one halfway through, it's 0.5. So this is kind of like a percentage, but really what's happen happening is that it's interpolating like linear interpolation of a, a point along that trajectory. And so the start would be 0, the ending would be 1. And so I could say if I want to have one a quarter of the way through, I could change this to 0.25, and that would be a quarter of the way through. Or I could change it to 0.75, and it would be a quarter of the way through. But let's delete this one for the second, and let's say our start point is 0 and we want that radius to be 0.5. So at 0, the radius is 0.5, and at 1, the radius is 0. That's what this is telling us right here. So we could change the end radius, so let's go like 1.5. So at the start, it's, at the start of 0, it's 0.5, and at the ending, it's 1.5. But we can add lines in the middle, so let's click halfway through, and that gives us 0.5, and we could change this to 0 if we'd like to. So it'll basically morph the radius from the start point, which is 0.5, to 0, and then it will reopen it and go to 1.5 at 1. I hope that makes sense. It's a little confusing, but let's delete these real quick. Go back to 0, and this is more or less how we're going to be using this in our designs. So we're going to add a point in the middle, or wherever you choose to, and we're going to change this to whatever, whatever the depth we'd like our cut to go into the body on. So I could say like 1.5. And so I have a 0, a 1.5, and a 0. And if I want to shorten that so that it's not all the way to the end, I can add additional points. So I could say here and here. And those start out as zero, so we're limiting our fillet to be within a very specific bounds. So this will be zero, this will be zero, the one in the middle will be 1.5, this will be zero, and this will be zero. So effectively, what we have done is we've created new start and end points. 
and then we can hit OK. And then we would then delete that face, which I'll show you guys a little bit later. So let's go ahead and apply this to the cylinder, which is a little bit different, but the same concept applies. But when you select a cylinder, I can select the entire chain. And right now it has no start points and end points assigned because a cylinder has, it doesn't know where on that circle you'd like it to be. So the first point you click on that circle will be your natural start point and end point. So if I click here, this will be 0 and 1. And then it will work its way around. So if I come to the other side halfway through, that's not an end point, that is the midpoint. So if I change this to point 5, you can see that I have 0 to point 5 back to 0. And if I add another one, let's say over here and over here, this one you can see is you can see that it's going in this direction because point 2 is over here. So let's change that to point 25 so it's a quarter of the way through. And let's change this one to point 75 so it's three quarters of the way through. So that way we have exactly like a cross. And let's say I change this one to, oh, not that one. We want to change the dimension of the radius to 0.5. And let's change this one to 0. And we can come over here and change this one to 0.5. And hit OK. And so basically we can do the same thing. Or we could add an additional point to further constrain where those apply. So I could go like here and here and shorten up where those get applied at. And then all we're going to do is go into the surface tab and delete these surfaces. And then that gives us something that we can either patch or loft with our own um, with our own rails or own surfaces that we'd like to apply. So I could create a loft, let's say, from this line, create a new profile to this line, and we've created a perfect variable chamfer at a 45 degree angle that matches these contours. And I could do the same thing over here and you can see that this one's a little offset. So create a loft from here to here. It does the same thing. But what's cool is because we have surfaces to deal with, we can apply continuity constraints to it. So on profile one, I could say I want that to be curvature. And you can see it's going to morph it so that it, it follows in the direction of the cylinder. And if I changed both of them to curvature, for example, you'd kind of end up with another fillet, but it still has to morph along with that shape. And so you kind of end up with a fillet kind of like what you saw before. So on this one, we could do the same thing. We could just delete that surface and then go create loft. You can also do this with patch, which I'll show you in a second. But loft between this line and this line. Sorry, delete that. This line, create a new profile, and that line, and you get a perfect 45 degree chamfer that follows that. And again, I could apply continuity constraints to one or both of them. And there you go. So last, let me just show you how you can patch this. It's the same concept. So then I can just go patch, and it will highlight the whole thing, and essentially do the same thing for me. The only challenge here is that the patch tool doesn't give you quite as clean of results when it comes to continuity. So if you want to change it to curvature, I could say this side I want to be curvature and this side I want to be curvature. I can still do that and it works pretty well, but it doesn't always give you just as clean of results as a loft does. So if I stitch these together, you can see that we've got the surface that we're looking for. So that's kind of the fundamentals of how the variable fillet works. So really what you guys came here for is to see how we can apply this to a guitar. So if I switch back, this is a simple guitar body that I've been working on for a project. And no spoilers, um, you guys will see that in the upcoming months. But let's apply some variable fillets to this to get some nice relief cuts. So if I come up to the solid tab, because right now I have a solid body, I can go fill it and make sure it's set to variable. And then I can select this outer contour. Now you'll notice that my start points and end points started where there is a sharp change in direction. So I didn't get access to these inner cuts here, but I do have access to this entire outer chain. 
So that means these inner ones will have to be a separate fillet, but this outer one can be a single fillet. So I can then add points. So let's say we want to do from the top of this curve to the bottom to the top of this curve. So we'll do like right here, and then add one kind of at the bottom, and then another one at the top. And then I can just change that. So let's change that to like 0.625. And so now we've got essentially what we did on the um, circle earlier. But we can still continue because our endpoint's over here. So we can actually add more points to this. So the bottom here and up here at the top of this apex here and another one at the bottom and then change this one to 0.625 as well. And so now we have one on both sides. I could also add one, you know, over here and go... 0.625 as well if I'd like to. I'm not going to do that in this case. But what we can then just do is hit OK. And then we can simply grab these two surfaces, go over to the Surface tab, and hit Delete. And once we do that, now we have, again, something that we can patch or loft together. So let's go Loft between this surface Hit the plus sign. It doesn't seem to like just clicking the next one because it detects it as part of the same chain. So hit a new profile to this one and hit OK. And so there you go. You have a simple little relief cut. And so then all you would do to complete this is do another one between these two right here. Hit the plus sign. Do the next one. Hit OK. And then if, you, if that's all you wanted to do, you could then just select the whole thing stitch it together, and you've got these contour cuts. And we did that in like two minutes. Super simple, super fast way to do this. There is one big downside to it, which we'll go into in a, more into in a minute, but that it only allows you to apply a 45 degree angle. So that can be a challenge. So let's, let's section view this so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's go here, and let's bring this back to where we have those cuts. Let's kind of find the deepest parts of them. You can see that those cuts are at a perfect 45 degree angle. So the method as I'm showing you right now only applies if you're willing to have a 45 degree cut. It won't apply for those shallow on the sides but deep into the body kind of relief cuts. There is a workaround for that, which I'll show you guys in a moment. But this is easily the fastest way I've ever been able to find to produce something like this. And what's amazing is it's still parametric. So I can come back in to the fillet command and change these locations or change the sizes. So I can come back here and say 1 inch. And let's say click this one and type 1 inch as well. And I could, let's say I want this to wrap a bit more around the backside. So I could change this point right here. And change its location. So this is our start point, or is this our end point? That's our end point. So right now we're at 0.7 along this line. So I need to go smaller. So I could say 0.6. And you can see it wrapped it around the back. And I could say OK. And it still works. And so I'm able to go back to the other one, let's say. And let's change that one as well. So this one we need to make larger because we're working our way around. So let's try like 0.45. That's a little bit not far enough, so let's go 0.46. That's pretty close. And you can see we have these cuts all the way around. Now, you can also do the same thing on these cutaways. So let's go back to our solid tab. Well, actually, first, what we need to do is... Okay, never mind. Theoretically, what you would do is you would do that before you uh, delete these surfaces. So let's go ahead and roll our timeline back to before we deleted those surfaces. And let's go back to our solid tab and apply two more fillets, one on this contour and one on this contour. So I'll select this line right here, and our start point is here, and our end point is here. So where do we want the deepest part of this fillet to be? So you might want it to be straight down. Or maybe you want it to be kind of more over here. So let's select that and let's go 0 0.625. That's looking pretty good. It might need to come over a little bit more. So let's just move that to 0 0.5. That's looking a little bit better. And hit OK. 
and let's apply another one to right here. And this is going to be our endpoint. This is our start point. And let's say this one we want to be a little bit more in the depth right here. So we'll do like right there and do 0.625 as well. And maybe we want to move it a little bit more back. So let's go 0.2 like that. That looks pretty good. And so theoretically, you would do all of this first and then start deleting your surfaces. So in this delete feature, I can add these as well. Hit OK. And then we would just patch or loft those together as well. So let's go surface. In this case, let's just patch them. So patch that one. And patch that one. Hit OK. And then in the stitch, let's make sure we have everything selected. So let's delete that stitch. Come back and reapply it. Now everything's green. Hit OK. And now we have a solid body with all the contours that we need to go ahead and make this guitar. And then if you wanted to, you could either do the same thing to the backside, or you could mirror it over. Now in this case, this is a little too deep, so let's go back to this one right here and change the depth of this a little bit. So let's go 0.625 to match the size of these ones up here. So 0.625. And let's mirror those over instead of applying a new fillet. So let's go create or construct mid plane. And we'll go between these two surfaces. Hit OK. And then let's go solid, create, mirror from the objects we want are these two surfaces right here. You could do all of them if you'd like, but we'll just do these ones. And we'll say across this mid plane. And hit O. Let's see if we can expand that. Hit OK. And there you go. So now you have the contour on both the back and the front. And they're perfectly symmetrical with each other. So let's take a second and talk about what if you didn't want a straight flat surface? What if you wanted like a reverse fillet where it curves in like a scallop? So we can do that too. So all we have to do is go back before we lofted those. And then we can create a plane. So let's do offset plane from here. And let's drag it roughly to where the top of that apex would be. Now, you could define this in a sketch to get really precise on exactly where you wanted it to be. But let's go ahead and hit OK on that. And let's show that plane. So we have a plane right there. And then we can sketch on that plane and project in, let's say, these two lines right here. So go create, project include, intersect. And it will give you the two points at where that sketch intersects that plane. Or not that sketch, where these faces intersect that plane. So we just hit OK. And then what we could do is we could create like an arc between these two, like that. And we could give that arc in a dimension. So let's say 0.5 inches. Now we can just use that as a rail for our loft if we'd like. So let's go back and let's go back to this loft right here. And let's add that as a rail. So bring back our sketches and we'll say rail right here. Let's hide our sketches, hit OK. And so now you can see that I, instead of having a outward fillet, or a flat surface, I can actually scallop the inside of that entire contour. And if you wanted to, you could vary this curvature significantly. So you could do like a scallop to a flat to a scallop or vice versa. You can, you can control this however you want at this point with a rail. So it's very cool that we get so much control off such a unique and simple method for this. So what if you didn't want to have a perfect 45 degree angle, right? Because this is that's a pretty limiting constraint to only have a 45 degree chamfer. What if you wanted something much shallower on the sides, but something much deeper into the body? Well, you can also do that too, but you have to basically apply two separate sets of fillets. So that way we can control the depth of each and then stitch them together. So let me show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete everything up to, let's go back. In fact, let's delete all these fillets. 
and we're going to start from here. So we will do, in fact, actually, let's undo that real quick, and let's do everything except for that first fillet, which is this one right here. So this can define our first one, and let's change these to be significantly deeper. So let's go like 1.5 inches in, right? Something pretty far on the top side, but we don't care about what's happening on the side at the moment. We're just trying to define how deep into the body this fillet is going to go. And so on this one, let's do the same thing, 1.5, and then hit OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Surface tab and not just delete these faces, but we're also going to delete these side faces as well because we don't want this curve that's going along the bottom to carry into the next steps that we're going to be performing. So we don't need to delete anything on these front faces, just the sides and the fillet faces. So we're going to be left with this. Now this is obviously pretty ugly at the moment. So now we can extrude this outer contour back up to give us another flat face to work with. So we can say to object, let's go to like this point right here, and hit OK. And now what we need to do is we need to close off this boundary so that we can delete this face and apply the new fillet that we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch all this together, as is right now, even though there's a red line right here. That's OK. Because what that will allow us to do is it will allow us to patch these contours flat for the time being. So we'll click OK. And then we'll patch this contour right here as well. And then now we can delete this face and still retain the line that we created. So that's why we patched these is so that way when we delete this face, we still retain that curvature. Now what we need to do is go ahead and stitch this together because you can't apply a fillet in the surface tab unless you have a single body. You can't apply it between two separate bodies. So let's stitch this together. And so now this edge is considered part of the same body as this one. So now we can apply the fillet again but on this time under the Surface tab. So let's do Fill It and make sure it's set to Variable. And what's cool is now it's detecting our start and end points from where we had it before. So we can select this edge and this end point, or this start point and this end point is the same start and end point as the one we defined earlier. And so then we could, let's say, draw a point right here, kind of in the center. And let's define that as something smaller. So let's go like 0.375 and hit OK. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side. So let's go fill it. Now we have to do these separately because these are now split chains. That's not all one chain going around the end like it was before. So we have to do these separately. Let's select that one. And let's select the apex here as well, roughly where the other one was. And let's do. 0.375 on that one as well. Now what we have is we have the curvature on the side that's significantly shallower, but we also have the line that we need for the curvature on the top. So all we need to do now is patch this inner contour right here and then delete these faces. And now we're essentially where we were before. So we can just delete these faces like that and then loft them together. So now I can hit loft and select this chain, hit the plus sign and select this chain. Now you'll notice there is a couple different line segments over here. So you have to make sure you select everything. So come into this side and select these ones as well and hit OK. And so now we have a shallow contour. So it's only 0.375 down but by 1.5 inches into the body. And so let's do the same thing on the other side. Create loft from this contour to this one and make sure we grab any remaining little arcs on the ends. And then hit OK. And then in theory, we should be able to just stitch these together. Yep, everything is green. Hit OK. And now we have a solid body. So let's try like what we did before where we added a rail to the inside to turn it more into a scallop. So let's create a construction plane 
So plane or offset plane from here. And let's drag it roughly to the apex of that curve again. So roughly right there. And let's sketch on that surface or that plane. And then we can project in these two lines just like we did before. So we'll go create, project, include, intersect. And again, it'll give us the two points of where that sketch intersects or that surface intersects the plane. Hit OK. And actually, I'm sorry, we need to do this before these lofts. So drag our timeline back. Let's delete that plane. And let's create a plane here. My apologies. So let's go offset plane from here. Let's try to get this lined up as best as we can. Right about there. And sketch on that. Let's hide our body so we can actually see it. There we go. And then project these in. So select those. Create, project, include, intersect. Hit OK. And let's create an arc between here and here. And let's give it something pretty shallow. So we'll do like two inches just to give it a little bit of inward curvature. In fact, why don't we do it this way instead? Let's delete that and let's draw a line coming out horizontally that connects to this. And then we'll make this one vertical. And then we'll just make these tangent. So that way it's going to come out flat from this edge but curve up to this surface. And let's make these construction lines. Hit OK. And let's go back to that loft and add that as a rail. So we'll go rail, show our sketches, and use that as a rail. Hit OK. Hide our sketches. And now we have some inward curvature. So let's drag our stitch and everything back so we can see what our results are. And so now you can see we have that little like scallop on the inside. And if we wanted to, we could apply a fillet here. So let's do a Let's do either constant or chord length, and we'll select these two, for example, and go like 0.25. Now, it might not like that because I don't, I'm not selecting everything else around it. So let's try selecting all of these as well. Just make sure we go all the way to the ends. Okay, that looks good. And then let's try chord length because sometimes chord length works better on this type of stuff. Give it a second. My computer's freezing. Now I guess it's not liking that because we have like a little bit of a scallop here. So you might have to apply, you might have to do it a little bit differently. Let's try something smaller. There we go. It just didn't like the size of that fillet for some reason on that particular edge. But there we go. You can see we have a fillet here on all sides, including the side with the more scalloped contour. Hit OK. And let's change this. Let's apply some appearance here, here so we can see better what we're working with. So let's go visual style, shaded. And let's apply like a wood color. So we'll do like a real dark, real dark color. And let's go into the render environment. And let's change this to top so we can see it a little bit better. So there you go. So you can see we have the scalloped side and the flat side. Both look absolutely fantastic. And this could be applied to so many different guitar types that I'm really, really excited about the potential uses for this method. Um, I would like to give a shout out to Mattia and Ben Weiss from my Discord and Facebook groups who helped me a lot in developing this method because they had particular use cases that they wanted to use it on. So Mattia, for example, wanted to use it on a more PRS style body or like a Gibson um, archtop kind of style. And Ben was trying to do it on more of a Fender style. And they were both able to have success with this method as well. So, and they helped me greatly in troubleshooting some of the common pain points and things like that. So what I'd like you all to do is give this a shot. 
because this could be the best way to do this possible, or it could be more trouble than it's worth, depending on the type of design you're dealing with. But so far, most models that I have tried this on, I have had extremely good success with, and I've, the results I've gotten have just been absolutely great. So I'm really happy with it. I would say the one downside that we are seeing to this method is a little bit of lack of precision. And what I mean by that, so if we go back to the model, what I mean by that is we're kind of just haphazardly placing points. So in order to do this really well, uh, you probably have to create a sketch of the locations where you want those points to be and then assign them at those points in the fillet. Um, or do the math and figure out like how far along that path is that and then do the same on the other one. So that way you can make sure that they all line up the way they should be. So, in summary, what we managed to do is take one of the more complicated parts of guitar modeling and simplify it using tools in creative and unexpected ways. With a few limitations, this method allows us to perform relief cuts in a matter of minutes rather than hours. So back to the question from the beginning. Is this method ridiculous or game changing? Let me know in the comments. If you'd like to support my channel or download models featured in my videos, you can find me on patreon.com forward slash Austin Shaner. If you'd like to submit a request for this channel, receive help on a project you're working on, or contribute to the development of new workflows like this, you can join our Discord server. Links will be in the description below. But thank you all for coming. This is Austin, signing out.